Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an update to the DIY battery build that I did on the Airstream. Let's get to it. Remember, if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. So first things first, let me just tell you about this upgrade in case you didn't watch that video. But if you do wanna go and watch that video, I'm gonna go ahead and post it right here so you can click on that and check out the video of the actual install. But basically what I did was I had three uh, 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries inside the Airstream. I took those three batteries out and I replaced them with four sets of lithium cells, okay? Four cells per battery and four sets of them so 16 cells in total and those are 304 amp hour batteries give me a total of 1200 and uh 16 or 1218 something like that uh basically 1200 amp hours worth of lithium battery pure usable energy that video got quite the attention uh because you know number one i i kind of rushed the video out there and i apologize for that because i did go ahead and post it before my final final product was done where i've added the circuit breakers i've added uh you know some protection around things like that uh, of that nature um, but when you're building a diy battery there is a thousand different ways to do it um you can use different size bms's you can wire up bms's differently there's there's way too many ways to do it to show you everything in one video i just showed you how i did it on my build so actually let me go ahead and show you the final product real quick so you can see what it looks like today so you can see the final product here i went ahead and added uh, some quarter inch foam on both sides. I got a second wood brace up here uh, to prevent any kind of expansion. There's also foam against that wall and foam against the very back wall. We have circuit breakers down the line for all of the positives. The BMSs are secure. Okay, the, the box itself just that's the walls moving, but the box itself isn't moving because I have all this stuff wedged in here underneath this shelf so it does not move at all um, everything else is nice clean and tidy got the main master fuse back there for the inverter mppt back there mounted up and uh yeah even got a little temperature sensor down here for uh monitoring and, and ensuring that this doesn't get any um <clears throat> too hot or too cold i also added a fan in the back back there as well as one directly under here um, that kind of blows down into this cavity here um, just to suck air down and out away from the inverter and over there suck air out and that's on a temperature switch right over there and that's pretty much that now these batteries have performed absolutely amazingly for me i have no issues they're not moving around there's no points of vibration there's no rubbing marks i've taken the system apart just to check for all that stuff already once um after i put on i think like three thousand miles on the road so plenty of road disturbance and movement and vibration and everything like that has occurred and nothing has actually moved a thousandth of an inch i mean it's it, it it's perfectly safe and fine how i did it um, but again i just showed you how i did it there's a bunch of different ways bunch of different applications you got to figure out what you're most comfortable with there's a lot of people that use a lot of different products when building these things you can build a battery just like i did in this only actually put it in its own box you can build these batteries and actually use uh, a certain type of tape that goes around the cells to prevent from expansion i chose to use wood because it has just a little bit of give so it's not giving um, it's not compressing the cells and it does allow for just a little bit of movement um, in terms of expansion but it doesn't allow them to over expand and cause damage to the batteries again talking about how there's more than one ways to skin a cat here um, when it comes to these batteries you know i used four individual 100 amp hour bms's all wired in parallel which means that the system could discharge 400 amps even though each battery is only rated for 300 amps but because it's spread across four individual batteries, 400 amps is fine because each battery is only going to get pulled by 100 amps at max. Another big thing that a lot of people commented on and tried to debate me on was that there th that this doesn't actually discharge that low. Let me go ahead and show you right here on my Serbo GX. I'm going to go ahead and put a little screenshot of my Serbo GX right here of the actual deepest discharge I, I, I pulled out of it. Uh, and you're, you know, I did this just to prove the point that it could pull the full 1200 
amp hours. I think I pulled like 1170 or something like that, but I'll post that right here. Um, and that just shows you that, yes, these actually do have the true 1200 amp hours worth of capacity at 12 volts. You know, when you're connecting these in series, you know, individual cells in series, the voltage goes up. That's how you got four series. Uh, four batteries in series that gives you the 12 volts and then four of those sets in parallel which still now maintains the voltage but increases the amperage right and that's how you have the 1200 amp hours worth of batteries here now these diy battery upgrades uh can be a little bit daunting to someone who's never built a diy battery before um but really it's not that complicated it's not that scary it's not that difficult and again yes there's more than one ways uh to, to accomplish the exact same goal and depending on your RV, your needs, if you're using one battery versus two batteries versus four batteries can all depend on what you want to do. A lot of people said, oh, why didn't you use a one BMS? I like redundancy. Right now, if one of those BMSs were to fail on one of those batteries, I still have three batteries with three BMSs that could still handle 300 amp hours or 300 amps, which is fine for my inverter and everything like that. So, you know, to me, having the four individuals was a level of redundancy versus having one big BMS, where if that one BMS were to fail, that's it, it's done. Plus the fact of one BMS gets really hot versus four individual BMSs don't produce nearly as much heat. I hope that kind of solves some of the comments that people had uh, uh, on that video um, and answer some of those questions. If you guys have more questions, please drop them in the comments below. I've been responding to every single comment on that video and I'll respond to every single comment on this video. I hope this video better explains uh, the finished product and answers some of those questions from that previous video. Again, a link to that video is in the description below. Uh, if you have any questions, again, drop them in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like button, uh, hit the subscribe, click the notification bell. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. Bye.